Now to a big court decision focused on reproductive rights. A woman has been granted permission to have an emergency abortion in Texas, a state with one of the strictest abortion laws in the United States. CBS News correspondent Janet Chamlian explains why a judge is allowing this unprecedented exception. A historic decision. I am going to grant the temporary restraining order. A Texas judge ruling in favor of Kate Cox, who asked the court for an abortion in a state that doesn't allow them and threatens to prosecute anyone who helps women get them. The idea that Ms. Cox wants desperately to be a parent and this law might actually cause her to lose that ability is uh, shocking. Cox, who teared up at the hearing, is 20 weeks pregnant with a fetus that has a fatal genetic abnormality. The suit filed Tuesday also states giving birth could affect the Dallas woman's ability to have more children. The emergency order applies only to the 31-year-old mother of two and ensures her doctor will not face penalties. This case proves that abortion is essential, life-saving health care, and the judge recognized that immediately. Texas has one of the nation's most restrictive abortion laws, a near total ban on the procedure. What the judge did today will create more confusion and ultimately more harm uh, than, and that, that's what we're concerned about. For her part, Cox, in a newspaper op-ed this week, wrote, I do not want to continue the pain and suffering that has plagued this pregnancy, adding, I do not want my baby to arrive in this world only to watch her suffer. The Texas Attorney General's office, which argued that Cox should not be permitted to have an abortion, issued a statement saying that the doctor could still be prosecuted if she performs one. The Attorney General's office, however, has not said whether it will appeal today's decision. John? Janet Chamlin in Houston. Thank you. For more on this, let's bring in Elizabeth Wydra. She is the president of the Constitutional Accountability Center, a nonprofit think tank. Thanks very much for being with us. So this lawsuit is believed to be the first of its kind since the Supreme Court overturned Roe in June of 2022. What kind of precedent, if at all, could this set? Well, the ruling itself applies only to the plaintiff in this particular case, and it only applies to Kate Cox and her te medical team, her doctor. But I do think it is important because it shows that we are seeing women in these states, and there are about 14 of them that have these extreme abortion bans, have to go to court to make fundamental decisions about their own bodies, about their own health, about their families, um, about their ability to possibly have children in the future. And so this sets a very strong precedent for people who are looking around and are bewildered after losing the right to choose abortion um, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. So while this particular decision only applies to this particular particular pregnant woman, I think we might see other pregnant people going to the courts to try to have their ability to make medical decisions for themselves with their families and their doctors, rather than having the state make those decisions for them. And uh, Texas is likely uh, to appeal. What's your sense of the grounds on which they would do that? Well, Texas, you know, did not take the uh, ruling lightly. The attorney general came out with a very um, harsh response to the ruling, calling out the judge, but also basically making clear that the threat of prosecution still exists for the doctor who would perform this abortion, noting that while the TRO that was granted today, this emergency ruling, um, limits the ability of the state to prosecute, there still is this, you know, the so-called vigilante law, SB8, mm. that allows for private citizens to go into court to punish people who are accessing abortion care. And so the state, um, you know, could follow the legal process forward through appealing to a higher court, although this is a TRO, so there are um, limits on that. But it makes clear that they are not standing down, even though the court has said that it would be a miscarriage of justice to require um, this this woman who is pregnant and with a child who um, is almost certainly not going to survive the pregnancy when she could have serious effects to her health, which would obviously um, be a huge uh, loss to her family, and it could affect her future fertility as well. Elizabeth Wydra, president of the Constitutional Accountability Center, thank you so much for being with us.